All right, so in Investigation 2.1, um, we start getting into solving things in a different method than what we were used to. Um, in Investigation 1, we learned some skills that got us to the focus of Investigation 1, which was solving systems of linear equations by graphing. And um, we would find where the two intersection points met and then get our solution. Well, the focus of Investigation 2 is going to be solving systems by symbolic or algebraic methods, which means we're not going to graph. Um, we're going to use our algebra skills and find x and y that way and find the intersection points. So all the unique solutions for a system of linear equations, that one point where they both meet is unique because it's only one point satisfies both equations. Um, that's always, we, we answer that, well, that final answer is in an ordered pair. We never write it as x equals 7, y equals 7. It's the co coordinate 7, 7. Okay. So that one point where they meet is unique. The instances where these solutions are not unique is when you have the same line. Because now they don't share one point. They share all the points. Okay. So if we scroll down here, it's not going to work again. All right, let's scroll down. So if we go to where we were at, this was the very first solution we did in Investigation 1.1 for the number of t-shirts and caps sold in a day um, were 18. So the one equation was this. This is going to be our little sample. And then the profit that was earned, well, the t-shirts were $5 a piece. The caps were $10 a piece. And they wanted to make a $125 profit. Okay. So here we have our two equations. Okay. So think of it as we want to solve, solve each equation for a variable. If we use x and y, we want to put it in slope-intercept form. So they want us to solve for t. Well, when I have, or they want us to solve for c. So when I have this equation, i got to move the t over to this side by subtracting it. And I'm left with this. Okay, the other situation, the other equation, we have a little bit more work to do because we got lots of numbers in front of our variables. So again, I still need to move the 5t over. I got to subtract. So I'm left with 10c equals negative 5t plus 125. And then I'm going to take everything here and divide it by 10 to solve for c. And c is going to equal, well, negative 5 tenths is negative 1 half t, and this is 12.5. All right, so I got my two equations, as you can see here, to solve for c, which is what they asked us to do in this direction. So now it says, since both equations are equal to c, we can set them equal to each other. And this is why we call this substitution method, because I'm going to take this t it's negative t plus 18, and put it in for c. So when I solve this, we're going to have this. We substitute the c out. And now we can solve for one variable. So by doing that, we can now solve. Well, the, bigger, the smallest number in front of the variable is negative 1, because negative 1 is smaller than negative 1 half. So I'm going to add t to both sides. Okay. When I do, I'm left with positive 1 half t plus 12.5. And then I got to subtract 12.5 to this side. So I got 1 half t equals 5.5. And then what I got to do to solve, well, when I got 1 half t, I can multiply by its reciprocal, 2 over 1, which is 2. So the half and the 2 over 1 cancel out because that gives us 1. So I'm left with just 1t, and then 2 times 5.5 is 11. So I get t equals 11. That's one of our solutions, hopefully. Well, if I go back up to the original equations here, I'm going to plug it into this equation first because it's, it's easier to plug into. If I plug 11 into that t plus c equals 18, and 11 replaces t, I can solve for C now and find out that 
11 plus 7 equals C. So now that I got my two answers, I got to make sure it works in both equations. So I already know 7 plus 11 is 18. I got to make sure it works in the other one. So I'm going to take 5 times 11 for T plus 10 times, and then C is 7, and that needs to equal 125. So 5 times 11 is 55, and 10 times 7 is 70. And when I add 55 and 70 together, I get 125. So it does check for both equations. So what that means is for them to have $125 profit, they would need to sell 7 caps and 11 t-shirts. That would be that solution to that actual story. All right. So that's your kind of your sample. So now we're actually going to get into this here a little bit on the next page. So if you arrow on over to the back, okay, we have the directions that are up here. We're going to use some Bach methods to find values of x and y that satisfy each system. Check your solution by substituting the values of the equations and showing the resulting statements are true. So here's some hints. Um, we're going to come back to that obviously later. But down here, we're going to start solving here. Oop. My screen's frozen. It's probably recording right now. Yep. All right. So we need to have them both in y equals. Okay, just like we did with the sample where we solved them for c. These are both solved for y. So they've kind of done some work for us already, which is kind of nice. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this part right here, and I'm going to substitute it in for this y. I'm going to set these two expressions equal to each other. So it's 1.5x minus 0 0.4. I don't know why they didn't put the 0 in, but it is 0 0.4. Equals 0 0.3x plus 5. Okay, so we set these two expressions equal to each other. So now it's just solving an equation with variables on both sides. So what number in front of the x is smaller? 0 0.3. So I got to get 0 0.3 over to the left side. How am I going to move it? Subtract. So this is... Minus 0.3x to both sides. All right, so that goes away to 0. And I'm left with 1.2x minus 0.4 equals 5. Well, now i got to get 1.2x all by itself. You should have your notes out. How can I get rid of, the, how can I get rid of this? Got to add it because it's a minus. Okay, and now just like any other equation, we're going to divide both sides by 1.2 to find the answer. And if you take 5.4 and divide it by 1.2, you get 4.5. So I found one variable. So now I can go back up to these original equations. And I got to plug that in for x so I can find y. Which one do you want to plug it in for? First one or second one? First one? Okay, so that's 1.5x minus 0 0.4. Instead of x, we're going to put 4.5 in. So, so 1.5 times 4.5 is 6.75 and then we when we subtract 0.4 from that we get 6.35 for y okay so we've technically found our x and our y so since we plugged it into the first equation we know it works in that equation right so now we got to go back to the second one and check both in that one, and if it makes that one true, we are good to go. So let's do that. 
So I'll do this one in blue, just a different color, so you can see. So y was 6.35, and then we got 0 0.3 times 4.5, and then what was the uh, y-intercept? I don't remember the y. 5, plus 5. Okay, so we got to get the left side to equal the right side, right? So 4.5 times 0 0.3 is 1.35. When I add 5 to 1.35, I get 6.35. So look at that. It checks. So that's our answer. Now remember, from graphing, our solution point was written as a what? When we wrote our solution, did we just write x equals this and y equals that? It was our coordinate. Right. Very good. So... This is 4.5, that's our x, comma, 6.35. And that's how you would record your solution. Okay? So I know the numbers weren't great, but the, this, the first one was a little easier because they, they had everything set for you. Number two is kind of what you're going to get used to seeing. We're going to do that one together before I turn you loose on one. So number two, they're both in standard form, right? We have to get it into this form so we can substitute. Okay? So for the first equation, if I just subtract the x over, we're good, right? If I move the x over, I get y equals negative x plus 3. That's the slope intercept form, right? So now I get the other equation in the y equals. Well, again, if I do the same thing, move the x over. I'm left with this. Am I good? What's the problem there? We have negative y. How can I get rid of negative y? Divide everything through by negative 1. And all that's going to do is change the sign. So this is what we're going to end up with. So after a little bit of work, we finally have our two equations. Okay? y equals negative x plus 3, and y equals x plus 5. Now, since I both have them in y equals, I can set them equal to each other. Negative x plus 3 equals x plus 5. So we're going to solve for what variable here? x. By substituting out the y, we can solve for one of the variables. All right, so since negative 1 is smaller than 1, we're going to move the negative x over. And we have to do that by adding. So this goes away, leaving me 3 equals 2x plus 5. And then to get 2x all by itself, what do I got to do, Sam? How can I get 2x all by itself? Subtract 5 to each side. Very good. So that goes away, leaving me 2x on the right. And what's 3 minus 5, Sheridan? 3 minus 5. Negative 2. Okay. So, if I divide both sides by 2, negative 2 divided by 2 is negative 1. So we found our x. All right? Now, here's the nice part about this. If I go back up here, where, which one do you want to plug negative 1 into for x? First one or second one? Blake wants to go outside. The, all right, we'll go second one. We'll, do, we'll, we'll switch it up this time. So replace x with negative 1 minus y equals negative 5. And I'm going to solve for y. So add 1 to both sides. I'm left with negative y equals negative 4. And since I can't solve for negative y, I have to solve for y. I'm going to divide both sides by negative 1, and I get y equals 4. So we've gotten negative 1 and 4 as our two solutions. So since I plugged it into this equation first, now I'm going to go plug it into this one. So replace y or x with negative 1, replace y with 4, 
and that's got to equal 3. Well, negative 1 plus 4 is 3. So it checks both equations. So again, if we were to write this as a solution, you have to write it as a coordinate, negative 1, 4. If we were to graph those two lines, that would be the intersection point. Okay. So now you see one where you actually have to move it in, in and out of standard form. So here's what I want you to do, because we don't have a lot of time together today. I want to give you guys five minutes as a team in your teams. Okay. I want you to go do number three, which is on the next page right here. I want you to solve number three for X and Y. Okay. And I'll leave this back up here as an example. So we are going to... We're going to pause the video here. All right, so let's see how you did. So, shh. All right, so for the first one, again, i got to get into y equals, so I'm going to move the 3x, right, and get negative y equals negative 3x plus 30. So then i got to divide by negative 1. y equals, it's going to be 3x minus 30. How many people got that when you converted? Excellent. That's converting the 1. The other one's pretty easy, right? You just move the x, and you're there, because y is positive. Negative x plus 14. How many people got that one? Good. Now set them equal to each other. So 3x minus 30 equals negative x plus 14. Add x to both sides. So 3x plus x is 4x. Minus 30 equals 14. And then I move the minus 30 over by adding. So I get 4x equals 44. So when I divide by 4, I get x equals 11. Well, would you agree plugging it into the second one would probably be the easiest bet? Yeah. So if I plug 11 in for x, 11 plus y equals 14, which means y is what? Three. So now we're going to take 11 and 3 and plug it into the first one. And if that works, I'll do that in a different color. We got the right answer. So 3 times 11 minus, and then y is 3, equals 30. Well, 3 times 11 is what? 33. And 33 minus 3 is 30. So yes, it does work. So again, what's our answer? Oh, yep, 11, because that's the x, comma 3, in parentheses. Our ordered pair. That's the intersection point of those two lines. So there's three more left on the sheet. Okay. Okay. So now we're on to number four. Remember, our first step is to get each equation. Let me draw a line here. Is we have to set it to y equals. So with the first equation, i got to move the x over by subtracting. And I'm left with 6y equals negative x plus 15. And now to get y by itself, i got to take everything and divide it by 6. So I get y equals negative 1 sixth x plus 15 sixths. Okay, so there's our 1 equation. And then <coughs> for the second equation, if I add x to both sides and get 4y equals x plus 5 divided by 4, y is going to equal 1 fourth x plus 5 fourths. So now that we have it both in y equals, Remember, again, we can set them equal to each other by substitution, which, again, I'm going to take this little chunk and substitute it in for y. So we get negative 1 sixth x plus 15 sixths, <coughs> excuse me, uh, equals 1 fourth x plus 5 fourths. So this is kind of an ugly, ugly looking problem because we got fractions with uncommon denominators. And uh, it's just ugly. So you can do this. Instead of um, 
trying to figure out common denominators and all that stuff, the great part about substitution, change all these to decimals. It's a beautiful thing. So, 1 sixth is 0 0.16 repeating. So this would be negative 0 0.16 repeating x. 15 sixths is 2.5. We know that 1 fourth is 0 0.25x, and 5 fourths, I believe, is 1.25x, or 25. So again, this is the same equation that's right up above. We just made them all decimals, so now we don't have to deal with all this, and now we can just go through and start making this, making this work. So... Again, the smaller number in front of the exponent is negative 0 0.16 repeating. So I'm going to add it to both sides. All right. So that goes away. I'm left with 2.5 on this side. And if I do... If I take 0 0.16 repeating and add it to 0.25... It's 0 0.416 repeating x. Well, now I got to move the 1.25 over by subtracting. And you may not believe me right now, but this actually does work out really nice. I'm sure it doesn't look very nice to you right now, but it will work out. Okay, so. Now we're going to divide both sides by 0 0.416 repeating. So when you take 1.25 and divide it by 0 0.41 and just put a bunch of sixes in, that'll help you. Your answer becomes 3. See, told you it worked out nice. So now we got a nice whole number to take and plug back into the equations up above to solve for y. So, if you take a look at the 2, let's pick the first one. So, now we're going to replace that x with a 3. So, you get 3 plus 6y equals 15. Okay. Well, to solve for y, I'm going to subtract 3 to both sides. I get 6y equals 12. And then I'm going to divide both sides by 6 to get y equals 2. So, again, 3 and 2 look to be our answers. So now, since we plugged it already, we already used the first equation, we know that it works. Now we're going to take both of them and put them into the second equation. And if it checks that one, we have our answer in coordinate form. So this is going to be negative x. So if 3 is x, negative x is negative 3 plus 4 times 2 equals 5. So I get negative 3 plus 8 equals 5. And when I add 8 to negative 3, that's... Five. So it does check. So those are our answers. Remember, we got to write it in a coordinate form. So you can write it as 3, comma 2 with the parentheses around it as a coordinate. If you were to graph those lines, that is the intersection point for those two. So as you can see in the first four problems, we came up with an intersection point. Okay? We had a coordinate. The next two, you're going to see a special case scenarios. All right, so let's uh, scroll down here, and here are our next two. So again, we have to get them both into y equals mx plus b. So let's do that with the first equation by moving x over. I get negative y equals negative x minus 5. Divide everybody by negative 1. This is actually the same equation that we did for number 2. It's in the, uh, it was the second equation in number 2. So you get y equals x plus 5. All right, then we go over the other one. I'm going to add 2x to both sides. And I get 2y equals negative 2x plus 10. That should be positive 2x, my bad. Divide everybody by 2, and I get y equals x plus 5. So now, again, since they're both y equals, I can set these equal to each other. Well, here's what happens. If I go move a variable over, they're the same number. So when I subtract x to one side, they both cancel out. I'm left with 5 equals 5. And here's that special case scenario. This is what we call an identity. OK? 
okay? And what that means is these two equations here are the same, which means they're on the same line. So they don't have one intersection point. They, they're on the same line. They have all of them. So this is the infinitely many solutions. There's not one intersection point. There's an infinite amount. So when we wind up with this identity, the left side equaling the right side, you're going to wind up with infinitely many solutions. This is the same line. Therefore, they have every point is a solution, not one point to both equations. All right, and number six. Okay. Now, again, if you notice here, this equation here is the same one as it was over here. So we already know what that equation is, right? Y equals X plus 5. We already did the work. Why do it twice? So let's move over to the second one. That is not the same equation. So we're going to add 2X to both sides and get 2Y equals 2X plus 8. Divide by 2 and then Y equals X plus 4. Okay? So now you can kind of see what might happen is when I set these equal to each other and then subtract an X, again, just like the other problem, both X's cancel out, and I'm left with 5 equals 4. Well, that's a false statement. Okay? This is not true. 5 does not equal 4. So what we have here, when you have something like that, when your variables go away, and the left side doesn't equal the right side, we have parallel lines. And I can't spell. That's why I teach math. Because if you look here, you have the same slope, but different y-intercepts. Those are parallel lines. And what do we say about parallel lines? They don't intersect, right? So how many solutions do they have? None. So this is no solution. And that is your answer. So again, there's three possibilities that you can have as an outcome when you're solving systems. You could have a coordinate in a unique uh, a unique solution, meaning one point. You can have infinitely many solutions, which is all the points. Or you could have no points at all, no solution when they're parallel lines. Those were the th those are the three scenarios. Okay. So I hope you found this video helpful. I'm going to go forward here. This is the homework assignment you're going to work on tonight. So 4 to 16, only doing the evens, which means 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16. Don't do them all. You're not going to get extra credit. And then on number 17, you're only doing A to D. You're not doing all the letters. You're only going up to D. All right. So that is your homework. Hope you found this video helpful.